Greetings, and welcome to another OutSystems how-to video. My name is Andrew Duthie, and in this video, you'll learn how to work with an external Oracle database. If you find this how-to video useful, and you'd like to learn more about working with external databases, there's a related course, Integrating with External Databases, that's available in the learning section of our website. You can visit the URL below to find this course. In this how-to video, you'll learn the following. How to add a connection to your external Oracle database using Service Center. How to import and adjust tables using our Integration Studio tool. How to publish your database extension using Integration Studio to your OutSystems environment. And how to leverage and consume your new extension as a dependency in your application using Service Studio and how to create and scaffold screens and applications using the entities it contains. We'll start the process of working with our external Oracle database using Service Center, a management console for my OutSystems environment. I'll click on the Administration link, then click on Database Connections. You can see I've got a couple of database connections already. I'm going to click New Database Connection to add a connection for my external database. I'll set the name to my Oracle. That can be any name you want as long as it's valid. Um, I'm going to choose the DBMS as Oracle. I could provide a description if I want. And then I need to provide the information for connecting to the database. So I'm going to paste in my host name, give it my service name, and then I need the username and password. And I'll click the Test Connection button, and I see that I get a valid connection. So we'll go ahead and create this connection string. So now we've got our connection string created. Now we can switch over to Integration Studio and build the actual extension. I've now opened Integration Studio, and I've logged into the environment where I'm working. To bring in the tables that I want, I can simply click File, New, and that will create the extension. I need to give this a name other than extension, so I'll call this my Oracle Data. And to add the tables, I can simply right-click the Entities folder and select Connect to External Table or View. This will open a simple wizard that will make it possible for me to bring in the tables or views that I want to use. So I'll click Next, and I'll choose the database connection that we just set up a minute ago. Click Next. And now you can see I have a number of different tables here, or databases, and I'm going to choose the Demo Database. Now I click Next, and you can see, and this is sort of HR-related information, so I'm going to choose the Employees and Departments, add those, and click Next. Again, I need to set my logical database name, click Next, and it should tell me the entities that we're going to generate, the departments and the employees, and now I can click Finish. You can see in my Oracle database that my database table names are all caps. Maybe I don't like that, so I'll change this to be uh, mixed case. Do that with departments as well. And now we can see if I look at the employee, you can see one of the things that we have here is an attribute called phone number. Phone number is actually a discrete data type inside of OutSystems. So instead of making that a text, I can actually make that a phone number and take advantage of built-in data type validations. I can do the same thing for the email as well. So I can make the email an actual email data type and again take advantage of built-in data type validation, built-in validations for emails, etc. when I'm creating my screens. Now that I've made the changes that I want to make to how my external tables map into my OutSystems entities, I need to publish this to my OutSystems environment. And I can do that simply by clicking the one-click publish button. When I click this, it's going to verify that everything looks good. It's going to update the extension source code. It's going to prompt me to save an EXIF file, which is just a file-based copy of my extension. So I can move that to other environments if I want. Then it's going to save that, upload it to my environment, and publish that. 
Note that I do have a warning message that I'm missing a configuration step. The configuration step is really important. It's basically going to map the connection string into my extension. So I'll go ahead and click configure and then we can fix this issue. This then opens the extension in Service Center and you can see the error that I'm receiving here is that it has one logical database with a missing configuration. And all I need to do is tell it which connection string I'm connecting to, which in this case is my Oracle. Click Apply. And now we can use our extension inside of our applications. To demonstrate our extension, I've opened Service Studio and created a new web application. I'm going to go ahead and create the web responsive module and then to use our extension, we'll need to add it as a dependency for our web application. So I'm going to click Manage Dependencies. And then in the producers, I'm going to search for Oracle and we can see the extension My Oracle Data that we just created. You can see the departments and employees entities that that extension contains. You can see that the names are mixed case, just as we change them to be inside the extension. I'll click OK. Once I've added that, it will show up in the Data tab under the extension in the Entities folder. So you can see this looks just the same as any other OutSystems entity would look. I see the entity, I see the attributes, I see the basic CRUD operations that I can use to add or remove uh, records from those tables. So I can come in and say, add the employees table as a screen and it scaffolds out the UI for me. So you can see it has the first name, the last name, email, phone number. I can just the same as I would with any other entity. I can right click here and since we know uh, what this shape of this data looks like, I can create an employee detail web screen based on the data that's in that external entity. You can see for things like the manager and the department, it actually even includes dropdowns automatically because it recognizes the relationship between the employees and department's entities. So I'll go ahead and publish this. And when I publish this application, for those of you who haven't used Service Studio, I'm basically saving a, co a copy of my application for source control purposes, compiling and generating an ASP.NET application and all of the necessary database scripts updating my platform and publishing my application. One other thing I'll want to do for simplicity's sake is switch over to the interface tab. I'm going to select each of the screens that I generated and mark them to be available for anonymous users. Now I wouldn't do this in a real application, but this makes it a little simpler for me to browse the application uh, without having to log in. So I'll go ahead and republish my application. And now we can click Open in Browser to view our application. You can see we load up the list of employees. So I can see a list of employees. I can click into a specific employee. And we can see, for example, that this employee uh, does not have a, a valid email address. So you can see I'm actually getting validations right out of the box where it says, please include an at in the email address. This particular record is missing the at. So I didn't have to write any code to do that. I didn't have to do anything custom. And in fact, if I go to try to save this record, it's telling me the email address is invalid. The reason for that being that I marked this in my extension as being the email data type. So I get that effectively for free. So I change this to at test.com and save it. Now you can see that my email is now valid. I was able to save my record and I'm good to go. So in this video, you've seen how you can add a database connection for your external Oracle database using Service Center. You've seen how you can import and modify the definition of tables using Integration Studio, as well as how to use Integration Studio to publish your database extension into your OutSystems environment. Lastly, you saw how to use Service Studio with the extension as a dependency to create screens and applications using the entities from your external database. Before we wrap up, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the OutSystems YouTube channel. There you'll find many videos like this one, including how-tos and tips on our advocacy how-tos and tips playlist. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.